Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to another episode of On the Couch with Creatives. I say good morning because I'm here in the UK, but good afternoon or good evening if you're anywhere else in the world. I'm Melanie Perry. I'm Julie Hyde-Mew. And this is On the Couch with Creatives. Fans and followers of the show will know by now that we're part of the Creatives Group, the private network for creative professionals everywhere. Together, we help you to create at your best, connect you with like-minded individuals, and therefore help you to grow your creative business. That sounds like a good idea to you. You'd like to find out more? Please don't hesitate to contact us after the show. We'd love to talk to you. But as I keep saying, this is on the couch. So Julie, who do we have on the couch today? Today, we are talking to author Liz Fielding, and she has an impressive number of novels under her belt. After writing 70 romances for Harlequin, Mills and Boone, Liz has now turned to crime. Her first and second murder mysteries were published last year in 2023, with her third coming out this year, 2024. So this is one busy lady. So let's get her on the couch, Melody, and she can tell us all about her prolific writing career. Hello, Liz. Welcome to On the Couch with Creatives. It's so lovely to see you. Well, hello there, Julie and Melanie. It's absolutely a delight to be here and to, to share this morning with you. Well, we are so impressed with your long, long list of books that you have written. 70 books for Mills and Boone. Uh, that is amazing. Yes, yes. Well, it's 30 years worth of work, so. <laughs> but even so, that's impressive, I yeah. have to say. Um, it's making my eyes water just thinking about it, to be honest. <laughs> well, but, you must have been churning out about two a, two a year. Um, two on average, but sometimes three, and I have done I, one year, famous year, I did four and a novella. So, <laughs> wow. So, what made you begin writing? Did you just um, wake up one day and say to yourself, I'm going to write a book? Well, no. I, I mean, I have been writing since I was, for as long as I can remember, really, because I really, really enjoyed it. And I've always loved reading and I always wanted to be a writer. Um, but, um, but the, what started me, I, I will show you something. This will amuse you. Um, some UK, UK readers will be very familiar with Twinkle, which was a children's picture paper. And I used to write Tessa's Toy Box picture wow. stories. <laughs> That's where I got my start. And actually, it's a very good um, learning um, process because you write um, a, a sentence um, and it has to describe exactly what's in the picture. Um, so there's no room for extraneous words. You have to be very, very succinct. And that's very good for you. Um, very good training. Um, so, uh, yes, that was that was great. And also stories for Listen With Mother. And then I read an article um, in one of the Sunday papers about... Um, two Mills and Boone authors, Anne Hampson and Charlotte Lamb. One of them was living in ta tax exile in the Isle of Man. Um, the other one had just bought a house in the West Indies. That was Anne Hampson. I really wanted to be Anne Hampson. So I thought, <laughs> I thought I'd give it a go. <laughs> um, I, it took me four, four attempts before I actually hit that the, you know the one that the, that that they accepted, which is this one. <laughs> this was my first book, with a lovely cover, um, set in Africa. At a, um, we lived in Africa. My husband and I lived in Africa for about seven or eight years, and this was set in one of the safari camps that we used to go to. Um, obviously, names were changed, but uh, yeah, that's that was great. Uh, that was a great start. So that's that's where I started. There's nothing more um, rugged than um, an African safari guide. <laughs> um, yeah, we yes. all see them. Mm. Well, it was a photographic session. In fact, again, it was inspired by one I'd seen on television with um, Patrick. Gosh, can't remember his second name now. Um, but a very famous um, 
uh, photographer who was a cousin of the Queen. Um, and uh, they were doing a, 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 a shoot in Kenya for in very much the same sort of location for um, one of those mag- uh, one of those calendars, you know, that had semi naked girls on it. So it was great fun writing it, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's it sent me right back the nostalgia when you held up Twinkle, really, because I always had the Twinkle when I was a little girl, yeah. and the Twinkle albums. I loved them. I loved them, and yes. I had them for years and years and years. Um, how did you, obviously, pro- progressing through your career? What made you want to write romances first and foremost? Well, um, it, it really was just the fact that I had read this article about, I hadn't thought of writing romances. In fact, I will confess I had never read a Mills and Boone up until that, that moment. Um, and I, it was the, this article, it was so interesting. And, I, you know, I, so I went out and bought bought some and uh, read some and I thought, gosh, that, that's fun. Yes, yes, I could I could see myself writing those. And so. Yeah, they're very they're very formulaic, or they used to be. Um, they they came a time when they started getting very raunchy and quite embarrassing, really. And then I stopped reading them. But as yes, I well, said, I, I never wrote those. I always wrote the the um, closed door end of the market. Um, have different series. Um, some of them are very raunchy. I agree. Um, and yes, I, I, they, they don't do much for me. But um, I like a story, um, and I liked writing the the um, less raunchy ones because you had more uh, more more room to write story. People talked more, <laughs> so, and also you want to leave something to the imagination, don't you? Really, totally, totally. That's part of the excitement. Yes, it's all. Yes, no. To me, it's all. You know, that's the space. It's it's all in the imagination. Mm. You don't uh, you don't need to sort of read it. Spelt no. out. No. No. So you received several awards from the Romance Writers of America, from yes. the Romantic Novelists Association. They've also honoured you with an Outstanding Achievement Award in 2019. So I suppose writing 70 books obviously is an outstanding achievement. Do oh. you think that you are um, particularly prolific or um, you just an, an uh, a usual run of the mill, Mills and Boone, right? I, I think think I write about the average amount. I, I you know, I know a, a friend of mine who writes um, for Mills and Boone has. She started just a little after me, and she's written over a hundred. So, wow. prob- I'm probably a bit slow. <laughs> Goodness gracious me! Sounds magnificent to me. You know, yes. sort of writing one book sends me into a bit of a sweat. I'd love to do it. You know, I, I'm a very prolific reader. Um, and I always thought maybe I'd be a writer one day, but I think for me, if I was going to be a writer, I would have to wait until my my son is grown up and left home and I could have a little cave at the bottom of the garden that I could go lock myself in for a bit of peace. You know, I've got no headspace at the moment. And I think to, to write, you need you need to be peaceful. Um, well, yes, you need you need a bit of headspace, but you know, it, there's there is always the getting up early in the morning and writing late at night, whichever <laughs> is is your best end of the day. But uh, you no, know, I but I had teenage children when I was when I when I started writing the uh, the books, um, but they were they were very good. They knew not to not to interfere, you know. <laughs> Get get up, mummy sitting at the the computer in her dressing gown, and they just went and got themselves some breakfast and <laughs> went off to school. Fortunately, they both were both went to school within walking distance, so I didn't have to stop to do a school run. Good plan. Good plan. It is more difficult when you have younger children running around and and demanding. Um, or needing needing your your attention, it then is. You went from um, romance, and then suddenly you decided, I'm going to write murder mysteries. Now tell us about that decision. Well, it wasn't a sudden decision. I've always rather fancied writing crime, but I always had a contract with Mills and Boone, so it was always you know I never really had time, and I had had I'd seen. Um, a documentary about the dreadful way that young women, particularly young, very uneducated women, were treated in the United Kingdom 
back back in the you know the first half of the last century basically um they could be locked up for just being you know for for going out and sort of looking for sex they you know not sex workers but just being a bit risky casual and uh it was very very interesting i I bought the book. It was a, an open university program, and I bought the book. And I started writing a story, but I just didn't have time. I really didn't have time to finish it. So it sort of sat in my bottom drawer for a long time. Every so often, I'd take it out and have another little poke at it. But, you know, I, I didn't have time and I didn't have a contract. And when you've got a contract that's going to pay you, writing something on spec is quite hot. So, uh, but then came lockdown and I was at the end of a contract. And when my editor asked me, you know, whether I was going to sign another three book contract, I said, I'm going to take six months off. I have to write this book because if I don't write it now, I never will. So that's what I did. I sat down and I wrote the book and I, I thought I probably have to self-publish it because, you know, it's hard, you know, to do something completely different but I sent it out and then Joffe very kindly very um their, their editorial director phoned me and she said she absolutely loved it no she she emailed me and said she <laughs> there was this email saying that how much she'd enjoyed the book and how much she'd liked it and I was I was waiting for the but because that's what you usually get but but it doesn't fit in our you know but she didn't <laughs> she just said can you phone me and we will talk about a contract Wow. So they gave me a three book contract and uh, I'm now working on the third book. So, because they, um, as publishers, they specialise in murder and crime, don't they? They they have, but they also have um, two different um, uh, series, two different companies that they've taken over. And one of them is largely romance. So they're doing more romance now. And the other one has a much wider general general fiction sort of field. So they they have expanded a lot in the last couple of years. So which which one was this? Which was your first one? Murder Among the Roses or Murder Under the Mistletoe? It's Murder Among the Roses, um, which is this one. I'm sorry, everything's back to front. I don't know how to turn my screen around. So, so I, yes, that, that was the first front. one, and that's the one which was inspired by the television programme. Um, and... Uh, so my my heroine is a, a garden designer, and she's working in the garden, and she uncovers the bones of a of a long dead baby, um, and it's so the the story sort of develops from there. It's and and there are all sorts of repercussions for uncovering the bones, and uh, so yes, it's a bit like Ro Rosemary and Time when they. They're always digging around gardens and uncovering bones, aren't they? Yes, yes, that's right, yes. Now, that is the book that is in the fiction category of the People's Book Prize this year. That's right, yes, it is, yes. So hopefully you'll get lots of votes because, of course, the reading public actually decides who wins the prizes. So um, I would imagine that you would get a lot of votes because murder mysteries are just very popular. Yes, well, I hope so. It would be very nice. But, you know, I always think to be listed is always a win because, you know, it means your book's out there and people are looking at it and taking notice. So, yes. And murder, um, murder Under the Mistletoe, you, you, have, your, you have an amateur sleuth and she's, she's in all three of your books? Yes, Abby is, Abby is in all three, yes. She's, she's my amateur sleuth. Um, along with her friend Megan, who um, chips in and uh, helps. So, she, she, so what is Murder Under the Mistletoe about? Do they also find bones? Uh, no, not bones in that case. In that case, um, she, she's she been asked for some greenery for the church hall to decorate for the Christmas parties that are going to be held there. You know, everybody's having a party there, the brownies, the old people, the... The, the the young the young wives everybody so they're decorating the hall as a general everybody's there all the different groups are there um and she arrives with um the mistletoe she's been asked for and a load of other stuff um and then she spots somebody who had been a teacher her one of her teachers from high school 
who she's very fond of, and she goes across to say hello to him. Um, and he he goes up the ladder to sort of fix the last of the lights, whilst a, a very unpleasant man, it's sort of very smooth, very unctuous. He's a bit of a silver fox, and he's sort of smooching, smoothing round her, trying to sort of get her to do something for him. Um, uh, and then the 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 guy is fixing the lights. He tightens up the last of the things on the top of the tree. The lights go out. There's a nasty sort of fizz. And then the next thing you hear is him falling through the tree and hitting the floor. And he's, you know, he's dead. Poor man. So we have an uh, unexplained death or um, a sus- not a suspicious death, but an unexplained death. So unexpected. So, um in the in that case like that, the police will be called. Um, and then um at the time they think it's just an accident, but Abby isn't quite so sure. And then, then she sort of picks up on this unpleasant guy who is trying to get her to um make over his garden, but he wants her to do it for nothing, you know, mm. as a friend, you know. Now mm. I know you, you're a friend. And she thinks that's very weird. And she's trying to sort of um, say, look, you know, I don't do that. You know, you, you, you know, make an appointment. You can come to my office and we'll talk about it. Um, but when he does come to her office, it, he leaves a photograph that links back to the first book um, in which a, the young woman, a, a young woman in the first book has been abused. And um, then there's a sort of suggestion that he knows something and that he's, you know, he will spread the word if she doesn't do as he asks. And, you know, and then she discovers that he sort of gets lots of people to do things for him. And she's thinking, this guy is a serial blackmailer. And then he gets killed. So, (laughs) (laughs) and that is definitely murder. So, uh, yes. Mm. So, and the third one that's come that's um, been published this year. And that's that's that. Well, they've both been published this year. No, oh, there's no the new one to be published this year. I keep forgetting we've, we're in a new year. Um, that's um, at the flower show. Um, Abby now has a show garden at the local show in in her district, um, and. Uh, she meets uh, a woman who is the te- is a television gardening star, you know, a real um, national treasure, who who also dies. So quite <laughs> quickly. So, <laughs> I love about murder mysteries. You you know, there's bodies everywhere. And oh, was, absolutely, yes, you yes. Never knew if, if there would be one murder or whether they would all go down like nine pins. Yes, no, no. Um, it's, it's. I think I've restrained myself. First, there was only one in the first one, and uh, two in the second, and I think there'll only be two in the third. But uh, Abby usually gets herself into a bit of trouble as well. So, <laughs> how different for you was it? Because I'm fascinated from going from the romance novels to like a murder mystery and I I love murder mysteries and that's what I read yeah. pretty much more than anything else I I love Agatha Christie I love all the murder mysteries Robert Thorogood I just love them all so I'll be definitely buying your books but I've always thought God, it's quite a complicated process to really weave the different strands together and the yeah. clues and um, especially if you're writing a, a, a series where you, you've maybe got uh, something that you said you've got a thread that sort of follows on from, from one of the other books. Yes. You yes. Know, and remembering all that stuff and weaving yes. it into a, how do you do it? <laughs> well, um, one of the big biggest changes is the fact that you have a lot more characters um as i discovered when i was about in the second chapter of the first book i thought oh god everybody will know who's done it but they wouldn't because it wasn't but they will think they know at this point and at that point i thought oh gosh i need more suspects i need more people and i had to sit down and think about you know this small small town very small town um and who was going to be there and who Abby would know and who is going to get involved. 
So that was that was quite a big change for me because in short romance, they basically like you to keep it to two people with just, you know, a little bit of um, secondary characters to sort of make the things go um, go along. But um, that was that was the big change. And then to kind of right and I have to say that particularly in the second book, it, the murderer could have been an awful lot of people and I didn't decide until quite late who it was, which was quite helpful because then I wasn't giving away who it was. But I must admit, my Zoom group, who I meet every evening, um, they were saying to me, so have you decided yet? <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> you know, I was getting very close to the end at that point. But then suddenly it kind of all fell into place. You know, I had two strands and two people and it all just dropped into place because by that time you know the characters and you can see how they would react to things so it, it's it is difficult and it is very different writing more than you know writing all these different strands and thinking about who could have done it and setting up red herrings and things and uh, yeah I'm surprised to hear you say that because I always imagined that Agatha Christie, obviously the the, the queen of crime, um, that she always um, worked her way backwards. Yes, I, I believe I believe she that she quite frequently, you know, didn't decide who the murderer was until pretty much the end, and then went back and sort of filleted in all the necessary bits and pieces right. that you do. So yes. Yes, so I mean, have- I, yes. I mean, this morning I was working and I, I wanted something to happen and I realised I had to go back and change something to sort of just add something in to make that work. And um, the way I write, I write when I finished a book, it's finished. I don't, you know, I'm not one of these that then goes, you know, just throws it down and then does a big revision. I revise as I go. I, I it, it has to be right before I can move on. So uh, if if something changes, I have to go back and fix it before I can move on. But then that does mean that when I get to the end, pretty much apart from a read through, I'm done, which is nice. And have you enjoyed that part of your your new genre, the the, the character development side? Yes. Have you in, really enjoyed that? Yes, yes, because, of course, Abby's got a load of backstory and she's got, you know, she was getting a divorce from her husband in the first book and then met um, an old school friend of her first, her first love, basically. Um, At that time, he's moved back into the town. So we've got that ongoing relationship. She's got three children, which... They are delightful, but can be tricky. You know, I invent all sorts of reasons to get them out of the way so that Abby isn't sort of (laughs) constantly worrying about her kids. Um, And uh, so that that that's a big thing. Um, And then, you know, her friends also, you know, you you think about what's happened to them. and, and, And I've got two lovely old ladies who live across the road. Um, a gay couple, absolutely hilarious. People love her, really lo- love them. In fact, I was, I was at the pool the other day, and one of my, one of my swimming buddies really, really loves the books. And she says, "Are we going to get some more Beatty and June?" And I went, "God, I haven't put Beatty and June in." <laughs> and I and wrote them a scene. <laughs> now, you obviously this is a um, this is a three book contract. Yes. Okay, so are you going to write um, more Abby Finch mysteries or are you going to create a different uh, detective? I don't know. Um, The last time I spoke to my editor, she mentioned a fourth book, so I I guess she's hoping for more. So we'll see how it goes. Yes. Yes, I I have an idea for for, for, well, I have a couple of ideas, so hopefully it will be ongoing for a while anyway. Yes. Are you currently writing a fourth one, or you? Is no, this is the third around? one I'm writing. Yes, it's uh, it's due out in May, so um, sort of late spring anyway. So, 
So I need to get on with it. I'm I'm a bit behind. And do you think at any point you 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 might get made into a television series? Would you like to see your books made into a television series? Or well, would you that's like a, that's always the, the dream. That's always the dream. But I think you need quite a long backlist of books before um, they get even slightly interested. Mm-hmm. So yes, I think yeah, that's. Time. It's got to go on and on. Detective Agency and Agatha Raisin and those, yeah, they, they yes. wrote a lot of yes. books. Yes, and I see um, Joy Ellis's um, Jackman and Evans series is going to be um, televised too. So people that, love it. she's it's got such, a lot of books there. Yeah, such a good genre. People love it. And I, oh, yes. yeah, I love it. And, and yeah, if it's a murder mystery on, t- on television, I, I, I will watch it. Yes, me <laughs> too. Me too. I prefer I prefer the more cosy stuff. Yes. Um, I mean, Acorn are doing a lot and um, some of the other, you know, um, streaming services are doing a lot. So it's not you're not just relying on BBC and ITV these days. Um, you know, I like, I like the, like you say, I like I like the, what I call cosy murders. Yes. I like the nice murders, you know, the cup of tea in a scone kind of murders where yes. okay, people might have been bumped on the head. And okay, they de- they died, but you know, there's no blood and guts and gore. No, and, no there's, there, there, yes, you know, no, there's nothing to scare the horses. <laughs> well, I can say that. <laughs> no, that, that that's what I like too. Cozy murders, yeah, it's nice. I also like the true crime stuff as well, although they ca- it can get very gory because cu- human beings can be very evil. Oh, oh okay. yes, absolutely, yes. But okay. there's some good stuff. There's some good true true crime stuff on the television these days. I enjoy it when they get some, they eventually get somebody that they've been after for a while and they get them on, you know, I mean, it's amazing what forensics and DNA and things can I do know. these this, days. There was a cold case series that was very yeah. good. Fascinating. Yes. Fascinating, yes. isn't it? Yes. They're going back to cases in the 50s and they're yeah. solving them. Yes. So, many, so many cases, with, cold cases were solved in 2023 alone. Yeah, just by go, going back into the into the files and using DNA. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely, yes, yes. Right. Okay, so this gets on to um, our, uh, our top tips or your top tips for aspiring romance or murder mystery writers. What top tips do you have for somebody who thinks, I can do this, I'm going to start doing this? Well, first of all, I would suggest they buy my um, Liz Fielding's little book of writing romance. <laughs> <laughs> which has all my tips in it. Um, but um, concentrate on your characters. I mean, start start with something happening. Start at the moment of change for one of your characters. You know, that don't start with the weather or dreams or waking up in the morning. Start with action. That's that's one of my big ones. Yes, so um, I think that's quite a lot of um, manuscripts that I have read. You, nothing really happens until the third chapter, and I will. I was at a a, um, a meeting with a with a Mills and Boone editor. You know, a, a talk, and somebody sort of said. But, you know, you won't know what happens and you won't understand my book until you get to the third chapter. Um, And she said, I need to understand it on the first line. (laughs) So start with something happening. Yeah, don't don't waffle on. Your backstory is something to be fed in at a later date in small, very small doses. And number two? (sighs) Number two, what what shall I say? I don't know. Um, write every day if you can. You know. That sorry, was... sorry, I, I interrupted you. Sorry about that. No, I was going to say write every day if you can. It's uh, I know if, for some people it's it's difficult, but if you could even find half an hour just to keep the continuity going, because it's very easy once you stop just to stay stopped. You really, you know. Even even when you have written 80 books, sometimes it's hard to go to the computer every day. And you have to, if it's, you know, if you're going to get your book written, you have to work at it. It is hard work. Um, so, you know, that that's also um, my advice is to just 
keep keep doing it and if if it does involve getting up an hour earlier in the morning or you know giving up television time you know it's easy to say i haven't got time but if you if you really want it you will find it um I think that's true. It's having to really want it. So how much do you want it? You yes. know, you can't just wake up in the morning and suddenly you're going to be a, a published author and the world's going to go do lally for your books. You know, you need no. to put the effort in. And if you're not prepared to do that, then you... No. Then well, as I say, I wrote three, three Mills and Boone before the fourth one was picked up by an editor. And I was very fortunate I had an editor who saw me through that book you know sort of constantly sort of I don't think they have time to do that now but I was very fortunate she uh she 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 really pushed she saw something that she liked and made sure that the book got finished and uh, I was very very grateful to her how does one um actually contact Mills and Boone and say I've written a book could you please read it they have there's a website Go to the website and there are um, details on there how to submit a book. Um, there's the Mills and Boone one in the UK. There's the Harlequin one in America. They both have tips, um, help, helpful advice, and um, and how to how to submit your book. The other thing is to sort of actually, particularly if you're writing romance, read a lot and read right across the genre to find what you really, really enjoy. Um, you didn't enjoy the, the the raunchier ones and neither did I, but some people do and they really like to write them. Um, but find find that level that you really feel comfortable with because um, you can't sort of scattergun it. You have to sort of focus on a particular style within the Mills and Boone genre and there are a lot of them. So you know, have a have a good read and, and not just one, but sort of the library is a good place for that. They have all the books. You don't have to buy them. You can go and borrow them. And because of PLR, public lending right, the author gets paid. So that you're not you're not you're not uh, robbing the author. Um use your libraries. They're brilliant. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Do you think it was easy if you, as, as you, you got picked up by Mills and Boone, and I guess another good tip would be don't give up, you know, just keep keep going, keep submitting. But do you yes. think it helped you having that long history, career history with Mills and Boone to be picked up by a publisher for your murder mystery series? Well, I mean, obviously they know that you are capable of delivering a book. Um, although I did, I did, submit an entire book I didn't submit three chapters but um you know they know that you you are capable of delivering not just once but over and over because you you've got history but if it's a good book um and it grabs them they will take it and I you know um the new um the new sort of style of independent publishers who are digital first um are very eager for, for books and for new writers. Um, the Storm, there's um, Booker there's, there's Joffe, there's a whole lot of them. Um, and and you, you okay, you, you won't you won't get paperbacks in shops um unless you, you're selling really well. Um but you will get paperbacks. People are able to buy paperbacks and and you know they they are very good at promotion and Joffe are brilliant at promotion. I, it's a it's been a real eye opener in comparison with with Mills and Boone who um, sell their brand they don't sell their authors whereas Joffe really sell their authors so it's it, that, that has been very nice I've really really enjoyed that it's interesting isn't it because we have a lot of people say to us oh there's no point in me writing a book because I'm not famous people only want oh, to publish no, no. famous authors so it's quite nice to hear that there are people out there seeking out new talent. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. What they're looking is for good stories, um, well told, sort of, you know. Um, and you know, sort of read books, see what, what they're publishing. Um that's all I mean, that's really one of the biggest 
best um, pieces of advice is see what's out there, see what is popular, but don't chase a bandwagon because, you know, if you can see a bandwagon by the time you've caught it up, it's, you know, it's out of sight. Um, but, uh, you know, like the Fifty Shades of Grey thing, you know, which then you've got loads and loads of books that were very similar. Um, but it, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas uh, the romance and crime just, you know, they continue um, because people enjoy them and they will continue to read them. I was really cross about Fifty Shades of Grey. I have to admit, I bought that because I saw what everybody was writing about it on the internet and people that I knew were raving about this book. And so I, I, when I was still working in London, I went into the WH Smith, I think it was, and I bought the, the, the trilogy. I, when I got in there, I, thought, I didn't realize I was a blooming trilogy. Anyway, I got in and I thought, right, okay, I'm going to buy this. It was the most god awful piece of rubbish that I have ever wasted my life on. And I, and I persevered with it for the three books. So I'm going to give it a chance. It was just poorly written. It was just a load of trash. And every, I think by the third quarter of the second book, I began to see a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel thinking, right, she's got something here. She's 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 developing something. It's going to go somewhere. And then by the third book, it had tailed off again. And it was just like, what the hell? And when it came out as a movie, I just thought, well, this is the one book series I'm going to be really delighted with where the producer has just totally revamped it because I'm thinking I wouldn't watch the story of that book because it was so bloody boring. Mm-hmm. Yes, my friend. It was that, that girl yeah. tripping over her feet and falling over and being totally useless. Yes, I have to say, I, I I never got to the second book. I read the first book because any time that you see something that everybody is reading and raving about, you think, well, I've got to read it, see what it's about. Yeah. But yes, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking, if this is the state of humanity today, if this is what it takes to, to get people in a flurry, God help us all, is how yes. I felt when I finished that book. Yes. <laughs> yes. Me, Agatha yes. Christie, in a well-written tome, any time. You know, I want a well-written book. Yes. That has good well, command of English it, would be nice. Yeah, at least if you if you um, buy a, one of the, the really raunchy end of the Mills and Boone, you know it will be well, well-written. That's, That's the one thing they are. Yes. <laughs> There was no, there was them, no but the writing is always, um, you know, spot on. Yeah. So, yeah. There was no, no, there was no saving grace with those Fifty Shades of Grey. You know, there was nothing good I could say about it, which is a shame because, as I say, at one point I did think she was going somewhere, but then no, it just fizzled out into. Mm-hmm. And when she was doing the interviews, <laughs> you know, oh, I'm not, I'm not really an author. I was like, no shit, really, you wouldn't know. <laughs> well, she made, she made a lot of money. I know. Not, but... I know. I know. I resent it. I resent every penny that book made. I have to be honest. For all the talented, all I mean, I'm not an author, but for all the talented authors out there who yeah. are fuming because their books, you know, yeah. And I just thought yeah. I feel for each and every one of you because you deserve better. Anyway, that's it. Run over. I'm going to stop now. Just to show that sex sells, but I do believe that romance sells more. Yes. Yes. Because I yes. think deep down we're all a little bit romantic. Um, yeah. whereas we're not all throwing ourselves into um sexual poses in sexual positions every minute of the day, you know? No. You've got porn for that. If you if you're interested in that then exactly. exactly. You need a roadmap, God help you, is all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> How dull. <laughs> right. Well, let's 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 uh, end the rant and um, let's dig into your psyche a bit, Liz. The romantic and mysterious murderous side of you, Melanie is has been shuffling her card, and you are going to pick a card, and then we are going to talk about it. Oh, right. Okay. Right, so I'm going to run my fingers along, and you just tell me to stop when you want me to stop and pick a card. Okay. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Right, we've got one in the middle. What did we get? Oh, this is a good one. I love this part of the programme. I love it, I love it, I love it, because people people picked such good cards for what we've been talking about. But you picked the value of creativity. Oh, righty ho. It's a very good one for you, especially uh, switching genres and, and being very creative about that and uh, creating your lovely characters. 
So as we are creatives, and you've been to one of our meetings, as you know, we do things differently to everybody else. We're going to ask you creatively about creativity. So Liz, creativity. What does creativity mean to you? What does it look, feel, and sound like? Hey, right. Well, it's um, it's that moment when you have an idea and you have to sit down and develop it and you perhaps you know do a, a, a chart you know you put the idea in the middle and lots and lots of lines thinking how can I take that so that's that's a way of creating it or and it's 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 that imagination about if you put somebody in a particular situation what will they do how will they react um, how will they feel? So they are all the, the major things. Um, you know, there's all the sort of um, stuff that goes around that, like where they are and um, what the weather's like and, and, and what sounds and smells are in, in their um, help to sort of build that sort of picture. But it is the feelings. It's the, it's the reaction. I mean, the reaction of... Um, of Abby when she found she was digging a hole to plant a rose um, to replace one that had died. And um, you shouldn't really do that. So she was digging a really big hole. She was going to line it with cardboard and then fill it with um, fresh soil and plant it. So she was digging deep. And that's when she found a bone. And her first thought is it's um, a pet's bone. And so, you know, she's oh, that that's sad, you know, and she's she's picking out the bones to rebury them because she's a nice person. And that's the sort of she wouldn't just sort of just crunch them down and sort of hope nobody ever notices. Um, and then she finds the skull. And it's a baby's skull now, you know, I mean, and her thought at that moment is her. It's a memory of holding her, her first baby, the, you know, how you hold the head and just, and I mean, she's just absolutely distraught. I mean, you can, you can just imagine um, she knows that she's found, found the bones of a baby. And at that point, of course, she has to phone the police because find uncovering bones, you have to report them um, in case they're. They're a, they're a victim, um, and it's clearly it's an illegal burial, whatever it is. Um, so, uh, and from then on, you get this sort of build up of you know who is the baby's um, mother, what happened, what happened to the baby, was it, did it you know die in childbirth, was it a stillbirth, was it something more sinister, you know. Just, just whole build up. So that's that's where the creation comes from, and you're just sort of building up all those feelings, and then you know just move on to the next stage. So that that that's that's creativity for me. Did did you do you ever cry when you're writing? Yes. Stuff down. <laughs> I would be hoping you flood the two. Yes. Just, yes. When I find, I mean, it's, it's it's it just comes. I mean, the tears suddenly start pouring down your face, and you just think, "I've got it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's working." <laughs> oh, I'm crying now. Gosh. Yes. Yeah, about dead babies. God. I can't yes. Ask, can't yes. Yeah. Yes. It's quite <laughs> emotional. I mean, my books are are known. You know, my romances were were emotional, and I brought brought the emotion that I you know I've always written to my to my crime i mean i would i describe it as a liz fielding with murders you know if if you do for for my my romance readers um it's you're getting the same stuff because there is a romance in it um but you're getting the same stuff but, but with murder mystery and uh, intrigue oh yes. i love it i love it well i can't believe it but our time on the couch has got to come to an end. Oh, oh I know. Like, we have so many lovely guests that with we don't want to say goodbye. We could just carry <laughs> on all day. Um, That's so kind of you. It's been delightful talking to you. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and your wisdom and your lovely books with us. 
And the details have been, will have been going across the screen at various points. If you would like to vote for Liz in the People's Book Prize, if you would like to purchase her books, uh, they're available on Amazon and from all good yes. shops. Yes. Um, as I say, details going across the screen. So do do check out uh, her lovely stories, whether it be romance or whether it be cosy murder. She will have something for you. Thank you to Julie, my co-host, my beautiful co-host, for joining me on the couch today. And thank you, Liz. It has been a delight. It's been thank wonderful you, Melanie. To you, Liz. Thank, thank you, you so much. It's Until been absolutely, time. absolutely brilliant. Thank you so both so much. Lovely. Thanks, Liz. Until next time, we'll see you. Bye. Bye.